Welcome back to Ostrich Investing. Brookfield Properties, or BPY, is a publicly traded real estate vehicle within the Brookfield family. And a common thread that I see when I read articles uh, on the internet about this stock is that it owns some of the highest quality real estate in the world, and you can see that on the slide here, but it trades at a large discount to net asset value. And as of its most recent trading price, it's trading at about a 40% discount to NAV. So in this video, I'm going to give you a few reasons why I think it might trade at a discount to net asset value. And then at the end, we'll discuss whether this discount might represent an attractive opportunity for investors. So with that, let's jump into it. Before we look at the unit price over the last five years, I wanted to show you the asset growth over the last five years. So you can see that Brookfield Properties has gone from 31 billion in assets back in 2014 or Q2 2013 to 90 billion in assets uh, today. So Brookfield Properties has really grown over the last five years. When you look at the unit price, and I'll point out that I'm, I'm showing the US dollar price here because their financials are in US dollars. So just keep it apples to apples. The unit price has not grown to the same degree. In fact, the unit price over the last five years has largely been range bound in that 20 to $25 per unit range up until recently after the acquisition of general growth properties, the unit price sort of fell off uh, towards the end of last year down to a low of almost $15 per, per unit. And now it's back up around 1776. So the units currently yield about 7%. On a valuation basis, it trades at about 19 times available funds from oper operations over the last 12 months. Uh, and again, it's at a 40% discount to net asset value. I think the last thing that I'll say here is uh, for those who, who are familiar with the general growth uh, properties acquisition, general growth has one of the largest portfolios of retail uh, real estate in, in the United States and retail is uh, obviously a difficult place to be right now. So Brookfield believes there's a lot of inherent value in these properties and they may repurpose some of them. Um, the market's reaction tells you that maybe they're a little bit skeptical. So we'll see how it plays out. But I think Brookfield feels that they've, they've purchased general growth at an attractive price and time will tell uh, how they're able to realize on that value. So the four reasons that I want to highlight in today's video that I think might, uh, might justify a discount in the NAV for Brookfield are number one, high leverage, number two, a payout ratio over 100%, number three, management and performance fees, and lastly, uh, potential conflicts of interest. So let's start with high leverage. Uh, and that's a common one that, that I see again in some of the articles that I read. And it's also one that Brookfield Properties themselves uh, discuss openly. Uh, at the recent investor day late last year, they had a slide that I've, I've clipped and, and put here for you as well that talks about leverage. And current, currently pro forma general growth properties, debt to EBITDA is 12.6 times, which is very high. Uh, obviously, real estate, uh, real estate uh, companies or investment trusts tend to tend to have a lot of leverage, but even even within the context of REITs, uh, twelve point six times is fairly high, and debt to capital is fifty eight percent. The long term goal, as they state here, is to is to bring that down to fifty percent of debt to capital, and bring the debt to EBITDA down below eleven times. Now you have the sponsorship of Brookfield here. So investors are probably not as worried about leverage as they might be if this was a different independent entity, but safe to say that leverage is, is higher than, than most investors would like. And it's also higher than Brookfield prof properties would like it to be. So that's high leverage. The second one is the payout ratio. Now Brookfield does something interesting here. Uh, compared to most uh, REITs that look purely on the adjusted funds from operations or the funds from operations uh, that the business generates, 
Brookfield layers in uh, the realized gains on sales of their properties. So you can see that here, LP investment realized gains. And the thinking from Brookfield's perspective is a big part of what they do is acquire assets where they feel that they can add value and, uh, and increase that value of the property over time. And once they've done that and crystallized that value, oftentimes they'll go ahead and sell that asset and re recycle the capital back into a new uh, investment opportunity. So what Brookfield guides the market to is while the realized gains may fluctuate up and down over time, uh, this is a regular part of their business and shareholders and investors should take that into account when thinking about the free cash flow that they generate. So most REITs would just stop purely at AFFO. Brookfield layers in the, the realized gains on, on sales of properties, which over the last few years has been a meaningful amount. You can see that in 2016, there was 37 cents per unit of realized gains and 66 cents per unit in 2017. So if you look at their payout ratio, including the realized gains on properties, they've got a payout ratio of 77%. So $1.24 of dividends or distributions relative to an adjusted AFFO figure of $1.61. Okay. But if you look, if you were to exclude the gain on sale of properties, now they're paying out $1.24 relative to the 94 cents that's generated by the rental income of, of the properties that they own. So the payout ratio on a more traditional basis is 132%. I think that that's one reason why uh, it may trade a little bit at a discount, but maybe more so in this case, why the dividend or distribution yield is so high at about 7%. Third reason are the high fees. So, uh, because of the structure, um, Brookfield manages BPY and receives certain fees in exchange for the management of, uh, of the LP. And it's all spelled out in the annual report. It's, it's quite a piece to get through. I'll try and just hit you with a few of the highlights. I've snipped a few pieces. Um, but the high level for investors is this resulted in 168 million in management fees being paid uh, to Brookfield or the parent company in 2017. And that's relative to funds from operations of 873 million. So it's, it's meaningful. Um, how do these fees get calculated? Well, there's three separate fee components and we'll go through them really quickly. Again, all of the details are available. And I think as an investor, you just want to be aware of these types of structures, uh, eyes wide open going in. So the three types of fees, there's a base fee of 0.5% per year of the total capitalization of Brookfield properties. There's an equity enhancement fee, which is an additional fee based on the growth in that capitalization each year. And that's 1.25% of the growth of that capitalization per year. So you could think about it this way. They could grow the market cap of BPY by the unit price going up or appreciating, or if they completed a large acquisition and issued equity. And then the last piece is what's called an incentive distribution. And beyond a certain distribution threshold, um, once distributions reach a certain level, any growth beyond that, 20, 15 to 25% of those incremental distributions will end up being an incentive fee that goes up to Brookfield and, and not to unit holders. So if you think about it this way, like you're as a unit holder, you're not really buying equity in the truest sense. You're getting paid a really nice distribution yield now. Uh, but going forward, you're going to give up 15 to 25% of your growth uh, in, in a management fee that goes up to Brookfield. So something to be aware of. And, and mathematically, I think this alone justifies a pretty meaningful discount to net asset value in the trading price of the units, because the units are not 
identical to what would be the theoretical net, as net asset value of the units based on the value of the real estate here. You as a unit holder aren't going to benefit fully from the growth in, in the cash flow of, of uh, the properties and the business. And the last one for discussion are the potential conflicts of interest. And these risk factors are in the annual reports. Um, they're often overlooked, but for BPY, I think it's a critical. I think it's critical for investors to at least make themselves aware. You know, consider Brookfield's business where they source both public and private capital to invest across their platforms. They need to manage which deals get funded by their private funds, which by their public vehicles like BPY, and which might be funded by capital up at Brookfield Asset Management level. It creates the potential for conflicts. Of, if you found the nicest deal, who, who gets that one? It does, does BPY get it? Or does one of the private funds get it? Uh, so that's, uh, that's something that Brookfield needs to manage. And I think one, one thing I'll say, like Brookfield has a highly respected management team. And this is something that I would suggest that I think they've done a pretty good job of managing the potential conflicts here um, historically. But as a unit holder or investor in BPY, it's important to know uh, the way these risk factors are, are listed, and we'll run through them in a second, you, you could be vulnerable um, in, in, they might find a really nice acquisition and exclude it from BPY or vice versa. They might find, um, on the flip side, they might find an acquisition that's more marginal or borderline and, and decide to put that in, into BPY. And you really don't have uh, a choice or a say in the matter. So you're really trusting that Brookfield will, um, will manage that reputational and conflict risk over time. So we'll just run through it quickly here. Brookfield exercises substantial influence over us and we are highly dependent on the service providers. Okay. Brookfield has no obligation to source acquisition opportunities for us and we may not have access to all acquisitions of commercial properties that Brookfield identifies. So that was the point that I, that I was talking about. Um, they might uh, find an acquisition opportunity and have one of their funds execute it or Brookfield Asset Management execute against it. The liability of the service providers is limited under our arrangements with them and we have agreed to indemnify the service provider against claims that they may face in connection with such arrangements, which may lead them to assume greater risks when making decisions relating to us than they otherwise would if acting solely for their own account. I think this one's really interesting because um, this one basically tells you that the people that are helping to manage BPY might, might do something differently for BPY than they would if they were, if they were acting for their own account or with their own capital. Um, because most likely the way that the management services agreement and the fee structure is set up. So, so they're coming out and telling you that there's the possibility. And I think what this really means, if you translate it, is Brookfield at the parent level is incented to grow BPY. And if you look at all of those acquisitions that they've made over the last five years, um, they're incented to grow the business from a total capital perspective, and that's how they're going to grow their fees and earning streams over time. And so they're telling you here that maybe maybe some of those deals that they've done aren't aren't expected to generate the highest returns on capital, but for Brookfield, they, they'll still generate sufficient returns on capital to make sense. And, and again, for the fees that it's going to produce at the parent level, um, turn, makes it a worthwhile deal to do. Last one, our organizational and ownership structure, as well as our contractual arrangements with Brookfield, may create significant conflicts of interest that may be resolved in a manner that is not in the best interests of our company or the best interests of our unit holders. So basically saying Brookfield holds all the cards here. So again, um, important to know this as a potential investor or unit holder doesn't mean that Brookfield has done a poor job of this in the past. In fact, I would say the opposite. I think they've, they've, they've done the balancing act about as well as you, you could hope, uh, but something to just keep in mind as a potential investor. 
So overall, BPY offers about a 7% yield, which is probably pretty safe given the Brookfield uh, backstop here. Although I haven't done full fundamental analysis on, on BPY. But based on the reasons I highlighted in the video, I wouldn't base my investment thesis around the elimination of the trading price discount relative to NAV. So that's it for this video. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me, let me know your thoughts and your comments. Um, happy investing. And until next time, don't bury your head in the sand.